What's up, everybody? Victor here, and it's time for a nation guide for Hess. Why Hess? Well, I just did the achievement guide for the third way, and that took a lot of time, effort, frustration from restarts, planning, and then recording, and it was just a nightmare. So I want to go to a tag that's a lot different, specifically a tag that I recommend to new players. The reason why is unlike all the other recommended tags from Paradox like Portugal or Castile, you don't get attacked by large tags such as Portugal getting attacked by Castile, or having to fight majors such as England and France, or the Ottomans into Austria, or finally, you don't just have an empire handed to you like Castile does, where you just get Aragon and then you get to walk into Portugal without really any competition. Instead, you start off as a small tag, but unlike everything else, you are in a sea of small tags. On top of that, your idea set is prime for anything you want to do. You have some Diplo reps, so if you want to go into the Emperorship, you can do that a little bit easier. You have Dev costs, so you can play tall. You have Discipline, so you can have the Supermarines if you really want to. You have a lot of options available, and there's really no limit, because you can easily get into French Alliance, or Austrian, if you want to. Meaning that you can become one of these major players, but instead of playing Poland, which just has it handed to them in this game, you built it. You built it with blood, sweat, and tears, which is something that new players get to experience. So, welcome to the guide for Hess. Let's get started. To start, let's go to the Estates and Privileges. This is a standard start. Grant whatever you want. So if you want to try something new to see if something's better for you, try it now because it really doesn't matter here. Now, if you are granting the Monarch Generators, which again, I recommend, grant them first, then seize land, you'll end up with 5%. If you seize land and then grant them, you'll end up with 4.99, and you'll have to dev one of your provinces. Which, not exactly bad if you have a dev requirement as your mission, but still, it is annoying. As far as your army is concerned, hire two infantry and put a general in charge. Doesn't really matter if he's phenomenal, you just need somebody to lead your army. With that, your military is done, and well, you have no navy. So, that's that. As far as your free merchant here, send him over here to Saxony to transfer or collect, it really doesn't matter. You're going to set him to establish communities to burn down your aggressive expansion, because you're going to have aggressive expansion. And do the same over here in your home node, just to try and keep that aggressive expansion down, because again, you're in the HRE. Now let's talk about diplomacy. Your starting diplomacy is going to be pretty much dictated by who ends up rivaling you at the start. The good news is, out of my 60 runs as Hess, just to make certain that these guys will be consistent, you're almost always going to see Brunswick and Frankfurt rivaling you. And what I mean by that is, I've only seen two starts where they didn't. The other one here is Brandon. I've had Brandenburg, I've had Magdeburg as you see here, I've had Munster, I've had Cologne, I've had Platinate, I've had a lot of people rival me. But Magdeburg, perfectly fine. Who you're trying to avoid rivaling you is Platinate, Trier, and Mainz. The reason why is because, well, all three of these are electors, and as long as you have this religious diplomats, that bump in opinion, will mean that you're able to ally all three at the beginning of the game. So you're going to pick one, ally them, wait a day, ally another, wait a day, and there we go. Now as far as who I'm going to rival, I'm going to rival Brunswick, I'm going to rival Cologne, and I'm going to rival, eh, let's go ahead and go with Magdeburg. And then I'm going to ally Munster as soon as I have my diplomat back. The reason why is they hate Munster, oh, sorry, hate Cologne almost every single time, and they'll want their land but they will not want their capital, meaning I can give them these two provinces and vassalize Cologne and then ask for these two provinces back, pay less aggressive expansion, get three provinces and an elector. You see where I'm going with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and wait a day. There we go. And now it's simply get the spy network down and I'm gonna get a spy network down over here on Fulda. The reason why is if you look at your mission tree, you have to get both Fulda, Mainz, and I believe, yes, Frankfurt. The good news is, is Frankfurt will tend to ally either Würzburg or Cologne, meaning you can pick them up in the war with either one of them. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording because 
No need to make this go any longer than it needs to, and I need to wait for claims. So I'll see you guys in just a second. And welcome back, everybody. So I have my claim on Cologne, but more importantly, I wanted to show you something, specifically how easy it is to play the diplomatic game as Hess, even though you're a minor power. You can already get two electors to start voting for you. Now, Austria is going to be improving relations pretty quickly, but if he dies really quickly, suddenly you're the emperor. Yeah, it can be just that easy. Now, that does mean that I was able to complete this Imperial Ambition mission, which gives me improved relations increases, which means I'm going right after France to try and get them to like me enough to royal marry me or ally me. Now, I'm just going to have to keep their opinion high enough because they will eventually do that once I have a large enough army, but that won't take much time. Now, as far as Cologne, they can ally a lot of people, and I mean a lot of people. So if you're worried that you and Munster alone aren't going to be enough, Go ahead and call in Trier. They usually want Kuln. And all that means is you're taking Westphalen. You're all annexing a province. You're taking Westphalen. And you're immediately releasing Cologne. The reason why is because then with favors, you can get those provinces back. Or if they break their alliance with you, you can get them through a reconquest. Or finally, the Emperor can just force them to hand it to you. Which makes them hate the Emperor, but they don't care one way or another about you. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and just go for the Westphalen option instead of trying to vassalize them, because these guys probably won't be a problem, but why? It doesn't really matter that much. And I'm just going to let it kind of play out. So I'm going to see you guys in just a second. And welcome back, everybody. So Cleves, I ended up piecing out, breaking all their alliances, which kind of meant the death of them. And Dortmund, I was going to give to Munster, but I didn't want to risk having them not willing to take Paderborn. So instead, this is what I'm going to do. I'm giving Trier Cologne, I'm taking Westphalen, they're taking Paderborn, take all the money, immediately come in here and release Cologne. Hopefully I'll get some free land out of the deal, but it is what it is, and now it's time to just drop this claim and get ready to go after Fulda. Now here, I can go ahead and just full annex them, or I can force vassalize them, doesn't really matter that much, but either one's good. Now it looks like France is still not quite there. Getting close though. And I'm gonna go ahead and just insult one of their rivals. Castile works fine. Just to try and make them become friendly. And this is all you really need to do. So I'm just gonna simply sit back, get my troops back in order, and get ready to go in on Wurzburg, which yet again doesn't look like there's gonna be any real problem. And I should be able to handle this without any real difficulty. So I'm gonna pause the recording again because I'm gonna take out Wurzburg and then I'm gonna circle back around, bring you guys back. See you guys soon. Welcome back to about a second later. I wanted to show you guys France after scornfully insulting Castile. Oh yeah, they're an ally. And Bohemia, probably my next option. Though I'm going to wait until I at least get my second vassal so that I can go ahead and pick up extra Diplo relation slots. Just because that way I'm not hemorrhaging Diplo power. So I'll see you guys in just a second. And welcome back everybody. So I took Westphalen and Paderborn was forced to be handed back to me. Then I took Fulda and Wurzburg was forced to be handed back to me because Mainz took Wurzburg. So I got two provinces for free and I haven't gotten Colm yet just because I'm waiting for the favors to accrue. I'm improving relations so I can integrate both of them. And I'm getting a claim down on Nassau to do the exact same thing to them because it's really not difficult to quickly expand playing as Hess. So I'm going to expand a little bit more because realistically you're just playing for time at this point. So I'll bring you guys back once it's time to talk about the next phase. See you soon. And welcome back everybody. As you can see some things have certainly changed. I've fed Trier a little bit. I fed Munster quite a bit more. I was going to vassalize Berg however Munster because I gave them these two provinces would not take Ravensburg. So I'm going to have to hold off and go after Berg later. That is why I have not taken Cologne back, because in order to get this province, it has to quote-unquote border my provinces, which means it has to border me, or it has to border one of my vassals, and since I don't have Berg, didn't quite make it there. So I'm holding off on integrating Cologne. Now, I brought you guys back to talk about Wurzburg, who I already integrated. The reason why is you have three choices, easy choices anyway, when you're playing as Hess. You can either go north, culture flip and then form Hanover which is a good tag you can stay Westphalian and form Westphalia no Napoleon required which also it's not a bad tag but you don't really get anything in terms of missions but that's a decent idea set 
Or you can go into Wurzburg here, which is a grasslands province with Franconian, allowing you to form Franconia. If you do this quickly enough, you won't have a whole lot of other dev, and as you can see, Franconians is not exactly a huge culture. Meaning, if you don't do this early, you might not be able to do it at all. Why is this so important? Because, well, unlike Hanover and Westphalia, Franconia has two missions that are really important. One gives you a personal union on Brandenburg, or if they form Prussia, on Prussia. Which would be very, very nice if you could ever have Brandenburg form Prussia, which you can do if you're a little sneaky and feed them as an ally land, break the alliance, and then go in and form the personal union. The other one is against France. You get a personal union that you can enforce against France. You simply have to own Paris, which sounds like a lot, but those of us that have played this long enough know it's really not. But the good thing is, is that you have choice. So you can choose to form whatever tag you want or stay as Hess if you really want to. There's nothing dictating you have to play in any particular way. However, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and start dev pushing Renaissance, and or I might wait for Colonialism, just to get myself high enough in Franconian so I can end up switching over and form Franconia when I'm ready. So, I'll see you guys in a little bit. And welcome back, everybody. So it's been a couple of decades, and it is now time to bring you back because I've been waiting for Charles to kick the bucket, and he finally has, giving me the Burgundian succession. Now, it's not hard to get the Burgundian succession as Hess. You are a nearby middle power at this point. However, you do have, in your traditions, diplomatic reputation, as well as an advisor, and if you hold off on them, even more diplomatic reputation in here, and then finally, even more in here. Meaning, it's fairly easy to convince them, so long as they're not rivaling you, which can happen. So if they rival you, you can't really get the Burgundian succession. But if you get all of that diplomatic reputation, you have like plus 15 reasons for them to roll marry you. Just improve relations, throw money at them, and scornfully insult their rivals, and you should be able to pick up a royal marriage. Now, they won't go to France if they're rivaled to them, and they won't go to Austria if they're rivaled to them either, or if they have low opinion of these guys. And in my game, they hated France, they were rivals, and they didn't much care for Austria either, because Austria didn't like them, and they had no one else larger than me, though at the beginning they did, that they were royal married to, and that's what they check for. Who is the largest person that they are royal married to? Alliance is not required, which is good, because I was allied to France, who was their rival, and they were allied to Holland, who was mine. Meaning I just got them, even though we weren't allies. So don't worry about the alliance part of it. Now, the moment this happens, France will absolutely break their alliance. There's really nothing you can do to stop this. They want that land way too badly. If you drastically improve opinion with them and everything else, you might be able to keep them from going hostile, but it's not really worth it. The reason why is, again, especially if you're going into Franconia and forming that tag, you're going to want to take Paris to get that personal union on them anyway. Right now, you have the perfect opportunity to go ahead and pick up people that rivaled France, such as Spain, to help them fight the French with you, and then use them to get that personal union so you can end up spawning from here all the way around. Basically, reforming the West, Central, and Eastern Francia empires without a whole lot of difficulty. Because I already largely have enough land over here to make the rest of East Francia not that hard to form. Now, in the HRE, once you get the Burgundian succession, they will try and demand that you release people in the lowlands as independent princes. This is why you pick up Poland if you can. Again, they are the same way. Simply get your diplomatic reputation up, improve relations, send money at them, because money really isn't that hard as has. You're getting so much war reps coming in, and you really have plenty of development underneath you to make it so I was making about two ducats at the beginning of the game, and then it became around four to five after that point per month. It's not hard to make money. Just throw it at Poland, throw it at France, throw it at Castile, throw it anywhere you need to, and they will usually ally you or royal marry you because you have so much diplomatic reputation. 
That way that if they do demand that you release people in the lowlands, well, it's just, it'll be Austria and any other ally they really can get to come in, which is usually nobody, versus Poland and hopefully Lithuania. And if you can get them fast enough, Castile, Aragon, because they hate France, but they will still help you in a defensive war. Meaning, you just became one of the dominant powers in the world. Just like that. And on top of that, you're still in the HRE, able to rapidly expand and use these smaller vassals to just gobble them up. Now, they will be disloyal, but again, there is an event that will let you just inherit them within about 10 years. So just be careful, keep your alliances where you can so they don't declare an independence war, and you should be fine. The last thing I want to say is about forming Franconia, because there might be people out there that want to try, and I recommend it, but still... To form it, you have to have six provinces in total that have Franconian culture. And if you look at the culture map, there's not a whole lot of provinces that do. But if you look, there's one right here in Westphalen. This starts off as Westphalian culture. However, if you go through this second mission here, if you have primary culture shifted to anything else, once you click this, it converts your capital to that culture. So if you become Prussian, it will make Westphalen Prussian culture. So simply use it to make one of, to make your capital into Franconian because that way it will count just as any of these other ones will. And then you just have to get Ansbach, which again, not exactly hard. The biggest ally they tend to get is Brandenburg and Brandenburg is not exactly dangerous. But with that, you guys should be more than capable of rising from nothing, building an empire, and becoming the dominant power in Europe. And realistically, I did all of this, no coalition, not even close. The closest one I have here is 31 because I just got done with a war where I stole Thuringia from Saxony, and in the same war, non co belligerated vassalized Brunswick. Well, I took the one province, and then this other one got handed back by Austria. So, it shouldn't be that difficult for you to rapidly expand. Just control your AE and use simple tactics to make it so you have very little aggressive expansion because it just keeps decaying. But if you guys like this kind of content, like and subscribe, I'll definitely be making more nation guides, both difficult countries and easy countries for new players as I go on. If you want to see a particular country be covered, say a country you guys are really interested in or where you guys are from or whatever you guys want, let me know in a comment below or join me on Discord. The link is in the description because I'll always put the list on there of what I plan on eventually doing, but I don't exactly follow an order. So let me know now. It might be the next thing I make. It might be something I make in a month, but if you don't tell me, I'm probably not going to do it. With all of that being said, thank you all for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful day.